right, cowboy. I guess we're going to be talking about branding your business we're today. Roping and a holler. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, little doggies, let's go. Yep. Yeah, and you know the the problem is some people, even business owners, really don't understand what branding is really all about. They think they do, but yeah. nine times out of ten they get it well, wrong. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when we're talking people, yeah, they're listening to their graphics artist person, right? And the graphics artist person thinks that that's the brand, right? I mean, is there, you got using red, you know, f point yeah. five whatever. <laughs> Yeah, they, they get down to the, the minutiae, but actually that has nothing to do with branding. Right. I mean, it has a piece. It's a piece. But it's a small piece. Right. It's a very small yeah. piece. It's not the, the big piece. Right. You know. uh, as a matter of fact, um, when Nike chose to use that little symbol. Right. The Nike symbol. The swoosh. Yeah, the swoosh. Uh, they spent, they paid $250 for that symbol, which was nothing. Right. But now that their brand, which is not the swoosh, because you can right. get a swoosh anywhere. You right. Know, yeah. you, you know, the swooshes are all over the place. Right. The brand is worth billions mm -hmm. of dollars. Right. So, so what is the brand? I guess that's the real question. So in today's show, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what a brand is and it is not. That's right. But we're also going to talk about some other important things like, you know, when do you rebrand? That's you know, right. How do you, what is a great brand? Yeah. What, is, what is a brand mark? How do you keep them doggies moving? Yeah. So we'll be talking about all those kinds of things. So before we get to that, I want to make sure I um, give our sponsor their due because, mm -hmm. again, they're the great sponsor. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I frequently go to their office to get uh, adjustments because my back needs tweaking as I get older. And but they also do some really cool stuff, like they have a massage machine. You know, that they have this vibrating thing that's sort of cool that you get on yeah, it. Yeah, and the, it, the whole body vibrator. Yeah, whole body vibrator. Yeah, we just shot a, an episode right. for them all that's about that. That's pretty cool. Kind of neat. And they got you know the Titron, which right now they have the you can get a free Titron scan. So yeah. if you're getting sick all the time and stuff like that, you might want to get that free Titron scan because yeah. it can really tell the doc a whole bunch about you know what's wrong with you. Yeah, and it's how they totally can help not you. invasive, no yeah. pain, and it's free. Yeah, get the well, free that, that's out true. There. <laughs> that's true. Um, and of course, they're they're the premier Nutrimost center in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. I lost 30 pounds. I'm coming up on six months, and magically, I actually weighed two pounds less than when I finished the program, and I lost 34 pounds during the program. Yeah, of course, we're going to have to re-weigh you after Thanksgiving. Right. Well, I, I guarantee you, and even after Thanksgiving, I may gain a couple of pounds. Yeah, but you'll lose it back. But I'll lose very good because yeah. I'm, I'm going to, the way I eat and live now has right. actually changed, so it's pretty cool. Um, so we're talking about branding. Today's election day. You know, these guys have branded themselves. So remember when, when uh, Trump started, he got the hat thing. Right. He had already... I think you copyrighted or patented the damn hat, you know, like a year before the campaign was going on. You know, people think that the symbol right is the brand is the brand right, and the reality is a brand is made up of multiple parts. Mm -hmm. The symbol, which I call the brand mark, right, it's the marker right. of ownership. Yeah. So like in the old cowboy days, right. you know, they, that's the brand, right? they branded the poor cow. Yeah, to keep, people, yeah. keep the rustle. <laughs> and the horses them. and all that. Yeah. I mean, they branded sheep. They branded everything. Yeah. yeah. Because the there was a good living to be had. Right. Stealing. Stealing. Livestock, right. right. As a matter of fact, there was a good living to have altering brands. Right. That was another thing they did. So, you know, the brand mark is one thing. It's like a symbol of ownership. Right. But it's not the brand itself. Right. It's the brand mark. Okay. So it's like the mnemonic, the trigger that lets you right. know, hey, yeah, it is Nike. Right. Or it is Apple or sure. it is IBM or Walmart or whoever the brand you're talking about. Right. The bulk of the brand is what the brand does. does. Right. Okay. Now, I don't mean the product itself. Right. I'm talking about everything that's tied to the company. Mm -hmm. So the company's behavior, the company's product's quality, the right. customer service, right. the support after the sale, all mm -hmm. those things together make up a brand. Right. And that's what a lot of new companies don't get. They think it's the logo. The logo is, the logo is not the brand. Yeah, they, they go logo loony, actually. Right. We've had a lot of companies come over to us, and it's like, you know, we don't want you to change this, we don't want you to right. change that, because that's my brand. Right. You got the wrong <laughs> color. Actually, we use the right colors, just that the screen shows the number right. three red differently. Right. <laughs> I mean, again, People go crazy about the minutia about what they call the brand, mm -hmm. which is usually the logo or right. the color scheme, mm -hmm. you know, the motif, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, that's usually not the brand. The brand is how you treat the customer, the value add that you bring to the table that makes people want to buy from you. Mm -hmm. So in, in the article, I talk a little bit about IBM because one of my favorite companies. 
They've been around forever. Most people don't know. They started in the 1800s. They used mm -hmm. to make all kinds of typewriters. I mean, they started up there with Rand and all those other guys, mm -hmm. which Rand is now a radar making, you know, they make radar. Right. But they used to be a typewriter company. Yeah. Okay. The same way with IBM. They were a typewriter. They made international business machines was mm -hmm. the name of the company. Right. And when they started getting into computers, yeah, they were they, big computers. First. Right, they were like big super computers, computers. And when they rebranded, yeah. they rebranded the name to IBM. Right. They shortened it up. B&I did the same thing. It used to be Business Networks International. Which it still is, but... They but now it's still... They, they call it B&I. And, right. and, and the logo says B&I. It doesn't say Business mm -hmm. International and right. stuff underneath. So same kind of thing. When people think of IBM, they don't really care much about... The letters IBM. Right. What they care about is the reputation of the pro the product and the company. And there's an old saying when I used to sell computers, you never got fired for buying IBM. IBM. Yeah. I mean, you just didn't. I mean, there might have been better computers. Right. But you didn't get fired for buying IBM because it wasn't ever a bad choice. Yeah, but you know, you know what the punchline is? IBM sold the the PC right. section what about ten years ago? I mean, they they no longer make IBM PCs. Right. Well, it's not it's my, not a, not a, not only that the Taiwanese company that bought it yeah. doesn't use the name IBM. I, right. For a little while they did, right. but, but it's now Lenovo. Right. That's who that's who IBM's you know mm -hmm. partner became out there. Right. But there's it's also it's not just them. I mean, Texas Instruments right. no longer makes computers. They yeah. sold it to another Taiwanese company. Yeah. So the Taiwanese yeah. well, company. And another thing too that most people don't realize is when the first IBM PCs came out, most of the components were off the shelf. There's right, very right, little right. that IBM actually made. Right. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I know that for a fact because I was down in Boca Raton, yeah. and I was one of the first computer lands to sell those products. Right. And my cousin worked in the manufacturing of IBM, so yeah. I knew a little bit about what was going on. It was pretty crazy. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's what uh, started up the big clone. But yeah, I mean, they bought you know. floppy drives yeah. off the shelf, and yeah. they used sugar drives and yeah. Seagate hard drives and right. all that other kind of stuff. I hired Bill Gates. The, the only thing they docs. actually made in the in the factory was they actually made the motherboards. Yeah. So they actually manufactured them there, but all the components that were on the motherboard. Most of them were made by other people. And they, they hired Bill Gates, Microsoft, to right. do the, the original DOS. Right. And, and hits, that's a funny story because, again, originally yeah. they went to Digital Research, which right. actually had a very right. good product. And Digital Research said, eh, we don't want to do that. Big mistake. Yeah. You know. It's the same way with Apple. I mean, Apple's another one of these big brands. Yeah. Apple could have licensed their software. Right. And they didn't. Right. And they, actually, they would have been a home run. They would have been the Microsoft of right. today if they right. had done that because yeah. they were leading IBM at right. that point in time, yeah. but they didn't do it. So again, getting back to the, the point, your logo is not your brand. Your mm -hmm. brand is, is the value add that you bring right. to the world. And that's why people choose you. Now, you should understand that you can have a positive brand. Right. And you can have brand. a negative right. brand. I mean, so it used to be in the world... You could do all kinds of things wrong and get away with all kinds of stuff. But we live in the consumer age. where well, the, the digital age. Right, know? the digital age. Yeah. The emperor doesn't wear any clothes. Right. So if you do bad stuff today. Yeah, it gets out on the grapevine pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quickly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> social media is very unforgiving. And in fact, we've seen uh, some underhanded companies use right. that to their advantage because they'll post, you know, fraudulent. Right. Uh, reviews of, of bad reviews for competitors and things like that because a lot of these sites review sites still allow people to post anonymously sure. which is stupid yeah and, and here's the thing it's asking for fraud if you are not actively going out right and trying to garner positive reviews right. and ratings and all then those kinds left. of things from your customers yeah. there's only one thing that's going to show up you, the negative you're ones. only going to have bad ones because i don't care right. how good you are even the best companies have negative reviews sure. all the big brand names yeah as a matter of fact have negative reviews well, in some way, shape, or form. Look, if you're in business long enough, sooner or later you can rub somebody the wrong way, or you're just gonna meet up with somebody that's just you know a problem to start with. Right, and and real real big brands actually have huge followings. Right, but they also have huge negative followings. Most right. people don't understand. So I'm gonna use Starbucks as the example. So Starbucks is loved the worldwide by a whole lot of people. Okay. They've created this huge brand. They've mm -hmm. shared the brand in other countries, and we'll talk about brand sharing maybe right. if we have time. Um, but if you go and on this, an article that, that I have linked in here mm -hmm. that talks about brand sharing and stuff like that, and specifically I talk about Starbucks. If you go into that brand, they have logos over the years. So they've right. their original logos, and then their shared logos that they're using in other countries and so on. So right. Starbucks is known differently in different places. But they got a whole bunch of negative logos that are not theirs. These mm -hmm. are like piracy logos, if you will, right. where 
people who hate Starbucks have made their own logos. <laughs> <laughs> and they break them and put them on T-shirts and right. a whole bunch of other like crazy Starbucks stuff. Sucks, yeah, like that. That, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you really want to see a bunch of crazy logos, you go there. But this is not just for Starbucks. I mean, right. this is oh, for yeah. all, all kinds of especially things. Especially big companies because they're, they're, you know, the bigger you are, the Google, Microsoft, right. the, I mean, the more eBay, visible you are, yeah. and people start screwing with you. Right. It's just, so, just the nature of the beast. Yeah. And again, one of the, the reasons I'm bringing this up, I mean. When I first started my company, Computer Know How, 40 mm -hmm. years ago, right. I, I went a couple of years and I didn't really think about it, so I didn't get the, the brand mark and the word right. mark and all that kind Nobody of stuff done. Nobody does when first start. Right. I, I didn't even think about it. Right. And then I realized, hey, there's this other company in Sarasota called Computer Know How, and it ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> so I quickly went out, and actually it took several years to get this yeah. resolved, like 10 years of fighting with this stuff oh, yeah. to get it resolved. And I never completely could get rid of these other people because yeah. what they would do is they put like computer dash, no, no dash, dash how, how like right? up, you know, and <laughs> and that's one yeah. of the things you have to understand. The sooner you get your brand marks oh, yeah. put in place, oh yeah, the sooner you can protect your brand yeah. as far as your brand mark. Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't. That's not how you protect your brand. The way right. you protect your brand is you do a damn good job for the customer. Right. That's how you protect your brand. Yeah. Your brand mark. You have to register it, right? And then you have to be willing to go to court, yeah, to and protect fight for it. it. Yeah. And guess what? If your brand is blue number three, yeah, and you change it to blue number four, uh -huh. you gotta re-register it. Wow. And another twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just for blue. Just because you changed it a little bit, you know? Okay. Wow. And, 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 anyway, so you better like it when you first put right, it. And I don't know what the attorneys charge it, for the name. Maybe be cheaper today. Okay. Probably not. You know, but you, the the point I'm getting at is, you, yeah. if, if you want to be able to have your brand right. protected, you, need to, yeah. you have to be able to defend it. Now, big companies do this all the time. Yeah. I I talk about the Jaguars here in Jacksonville, yeah. in Jacksonville, Florida. So the NFL team Jaguars, when they first came out, they had this really cool logo that I actually liked. But it looked very, very close to the symbol that's on the front of a Jaguar car. You know that yeah. silver yeah, Jaguar yeah, 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 that's yeah. pointing out like yeah, yeah. yeah, the sleek jumping cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what it looked like. Yeah. And Jaguar, the automobile company, says, hey, wait a minute, yeah. now you're stealing our brand, you can't do that. So they, they went at each other for, I don't know, six months, and their conclusion was the Jaguars changed their logo to like the big cat, right. the face of the cat or whatever on the side of the helmet. Right. And Jaguar, the automobile company, became an advertising sponsor. There you go. So I don't know how they worked it out. Yeah. There wasn't all the details were spread out, but there was money spent because them big time right. lawyers make a lot of oh, money yeah. per hour. Absolutely. You know, four or five hundred dollars an hour. Um, so that's that's a big deal. And again, if you ever get to the point where you are actually have what we what the average layperson calls a brand, a brand is usually a brand name. Mm -hmm. It's a big name: Coca Cola, right. Pepsi, right. Apple, mm -hmm. Walmart, whoever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get to that point, you could be a regional brand right. that you can now expand into other places. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that a lot of regional brands do is they'll either go up and buy other companies in other territories sure. and then rebrand them as yeah. them. Right. Okay. Or if they're expanding into another country, sure. they'll just license the brand into that country. Mm -hmm. And they'll set up some kind of rules that say, hey, you know, if you're going to be using our name, you got to do it this way, blah, blah, blah. Hey, well, it's like Coca-Cola. I mean, you see it everywhere around right. the world. Coca-Cola sold all over the place. Yeah. They actually sell how to make Coca-Cola in Arabia, okay, <laughs> in, in South America and so on. So the, here's the formula. Here's how you can make it. You can use our label and so on. But you'll notice even when you go to these other countries, Coca-Cola's brand is a little different. So in Arabic, it doesn't look exactly right. like Coca-Cola. Right. Okay? Right. Yeah, because it is written out. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's, that's probably the, the same thing in you know Asia. Right, and again, oh. the big thing that people need to understand about brands: brands are not static; they evolve right. over time. Oh. So Coca-Cola used to have one product; now they got like twenty right. products. Yeah, in fact, they they constantly mess with the formula, right. sometimes to their chagrin. Right, and I remember when they they came out with New, New Coke, Coke or whatever right. the hell it was called, and people said, "Eh." <laughs> Even though all the researchers said that this is a much better tasting right. Coke, people said, eh, right, I don't like it, you, you mess it with the Coke. Right, exactly. So they ended up having oh, both of those yeah. for a while. Now they got Coke It and whatever the hell yeah. they got. You know, they got Cherry Coke. Right. So it's got a little bit different logo. Coke Zero. Than, yeah, Coke Zero. It's got a black can. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have lots of different brands. And I remember when I was a kid, you know, the Coca-Cola symbols in the, right. you know, in the buildings and stuff like that. Coke, in my opinion, is the quintessential brand. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because 
they've been around forever. I mean, they right. started in like 1800s mm-hmm. when when they used to have cocaine in the coke. Right. Yeah. <laughs> coca. That's coca. where the coca and the coca right. cola for a reason. You know, and but they've rebranded many many times. Like like the Coke bottle, for example, the original Coke bottles. Right. They stopped making them around the 50s, something like yeah. that. And they have these new Coke bottles. Those old Coke bottles are worth a lot of money. Yeah. I know my brother's a collector, so right. he's got a few of them, and he gave me one of them. But think about Coke. They've messed up a bunch of times with oh, their sure. brand and so on. But yeah. one of the things they've always been able to be really good at is they listen to their customers, yeah. and then they make it right. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they dump money at it like it's going out of style. They're not afraid to market their company. Right. So one of the things they do is they listen, they produce a quality product. Even if people didn't like it, they right. produce a quality product. And they make it right. Sure. They always make it right. They have lots of things that they do for their customers. They, they do really, really good marketing. Mm-hmm. One of the things that most people don't understand about a brand mm-hmm. is a brand is tied to marketing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're not doing really good marketing, yeah. you probably don't have a brand. Right. True. Okay. So I'll give you a real, my, my favorite example is Yeti. Okay. People are going gaga over Yeti coolers and mm-hmm. Yeti, you know, cups and all that right. kind of stuff. As if Yeti invented all this. Right. Stuff. And hell, those things have been around for 50 years. Right, yeah. But they're really good at branding. Yeah, but they're <laughs> really, really good at marketing that brand. So there are other products that actually you put the ice and everything and it yeah. lasts longer than the Yeti cup and right. cooler and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But Yeti has really good marketing right. of their brand. Yeah. Their marketing of their brand. So right. they come out, they show how tough they are. Right. They were the first people to say, hey, you put ice in it, it lasts 18 hours or whatever. Right. Stanley had a cup that would do that for, the, my dad had one when <laughs> I used to go painting with 50 years ago. Yeah. So it's not new, but they're really good at branding. Right. A- another super company, and that is Apple. Mm-hmm. Apple didn't invent the no. smartphone? No, I, they were out for five yeah. or six years before that. Well, and, and you see they the, didn't even invent the touch screen. Right. Well, you know, and, and you know what else I always say, you know, because uh, people that are really into Apple, what I call Apple heads, I mean, they'll stand out in the rain right. waiting to get the news released. It's right. crazy. But what Apple really does is they make a great product and they know how to market it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're really, really good at marketing. And that's why you have those people standing mm-hmm. in lines because... These people fall in love with the product, the simplicity, the right. ease of use, the quality, and all that kind of stuff. And then Apple, more for the most part, takes care of them if there's a problem. Now look at Samsung. Right. Samsung has generally had a really good product, and mm-hmm. lately they got blowing up because of, because literally their product's blowing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not a good thing. So that's not a good thing, and they have to. They're going to have to do something. So we'll talk about rebranding here in a minute. But let's talk about what's a good brand. Okay. What makes a good brand? Those two things. So we're talking about the brand mark. Right. And the brand itself. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking about a good brand, being good right. makes you a good brand. Right. What does that mean? <laughs> you take care of the customer. You listen to them. You give right. them a good product. You give them a good service. You give them support after the mm-hmm. sale. You're trying to set their house on fire. Right. You you walk you walk the talk. You right. take care of the of the customer. Right. That's a good brand. Okay. A good brand mark is made up of. Very specific elements, right. in my opinion, of course, this is my opinion, unique. Mm-hmm. Gotta be unique, right. otherwise it's it's a copied brand. Right. It's, it's somebody else's brand that you're stealing. Right. It's gotta be simple, if at all possible. I yeah. like eBay. eBay sort of, a, you know, it doesn't mean, what the hell does it mean? Right. It actually has a meaning when they originally came out with it as an acronym for something. I don't even remember what it is now because it's been so many years, like 25, 30 years. I thought maybe they lived on East Bay Avenue yeah. or something, yeah. you know, eBay. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be simple. It's got to be easy to understand if at all possible. So my company's name was Computer Know How. Well, you know what the hell it means. It's right. like they were a computer company, right. and they knew how to do something. I do know what the <laughs> uh, what the acronym Yahoo means. What's that mean? You always have other options. There you go. And see, again, that was one of them things. And Google was an acronym, too. No, Google is an acronym. Google is actually a term. It's a Googleplex, which is a really gigantic That's number. But I'm saying it has, yeah. it has a meaning. It has right. a real meaning. You may not understand what the heck it means, right. but easy to understand helps right. because the easier it is to understand, yeah. the better it is. I uh, like Best Buy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, easy to remember. Right. And it stands for something. And on yeah. top of that, your logo and everything should be congruent with the, with the philosophy, the company, the right. core values, those kinds right. of things. Now, of course, the problem is sometimes you have good brands that turn bad because right, right, right. of things that happen or things that they cause. Yeah, and, and again, 
you can make a big mistake like Coca-Cola and recover. Mm -hmm. I mean, they recovered that year. It didn't mm -hmm. take two or three years to recover right. from making the crazy Coke. Right. Okay. Microsoft, same type of thing. Mm -hmm. They had Windows 7. You know, they had Windows Vista, which sucked. Right. Everybody they hated like it. That, right. They, they came out with Windows everybody 7. Liked it. Everybody liked it. I mean, that was a, they had right. it run for like three years. Yeah. Then they came out with Windows 8, and it was like, ah. Yeah, well, that's because they were trying to make that transition between right. the computer and, you know, or the, the tablets tablet. and all right. that kind of stuff. But they learned a lot from Windows right. 8, but the Windows 8 really was a crappy product. Oh, in I mean, fact, I have a tablet sitting on my shelf that I don't use simply right. because it was Windows 8. Right. I never did like it. Yeah. So that was a problem that people have. But what they did was they learned from that product mm -hmm. and, they had, and they made a new product. Right. They also did some other things. They had a fallback position. So when people weren't buying Windows 8, mm -hmm. They made it so that you could get Windows 7. Right. Even though they had canceled that right. product. Right. They had canceled that well, product. Well, they had to because people yeah. just weren't going to take they Windows 8. They were going to do They had to bring it back. Else, and you know? that's, yeah, they took a... Uh, took a hit. A, a, well, they took a note, actually, from Coke because yeah. that's what Coke did. Coke said, we're not making <laughs> the old Coke anymore. Right. And guess what? The they had to start making right. the old Coke yeah. again. Uh, let me rephrase it. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 we, we were wrong. We're making the old Coke again. Yeah. Well, okay. and kind of when you think about it, Windows 10... Works an awful lot like Windows 7. Yeah, so what they did was they knew the people... They really just call it Windows that, 7 Plus. Right. What they didn't do with Windows 8 was really listen to people. Right. Because people were saying, we really like Windows 7, don't mess with it. Right. <laughs> if you're going to give us something better than Windows 7, it's got to be like Windows 7, right. but better. Right. Not totally different yeah. and clungy. Right. Clungy. Yeah. You clungy, know? yeah. I mean, because Windows 8, I mean, you couldn't figure out how the hell it worked. I mean, right. it had... Right. Nothing made sense. It didn't right. have a congruent model or design. Right. Yeah. So why, why do people rebrand? A lot of times, they because they've done something wrong. Right. They've stepped in it. Right. <laughs> so here's a couple of items that, that you'll see people do. Uh, if you've done something negative mm -hmm. or something bad happened, or whatever, right. like we'll talk about BP in a minute. The right. BP oil yeah. spill is a big example of that. You know, if you have a really bad reputation for whatever reason, we had a client several years ago that one of the owners got caught doing something illegal. So they sold the business. Now, the new owner has this business, but he's got the reputation yeah, of the old still business. still following him. So what they had to do was do some rebranding because, again, they got a new owner right. and that kind of stuff. Now, if you change owners, that doesn't mean you should rebrand, just so right. you understand. Because you may have a great brand and you just bought it. Right. Rebranding would be a bad thing. Right. Okay. But if there's a negative reputation, that should be a reason to rebrand. Another one would be if your company is really old and stale mm -hmm. and you have now changed your product emphasis. Right. IBM did that. Mm -hmm. Okay? They weren't making typewriters anymore. I mean, right. they were. Right. They were making typewriters when I was in college, which mm -hmm. was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. That went away. Right. Okay? Um, Polaroid had to change their Polaroid, you know, monstrously because I mean, they Kodak, were built, right? Kodak, what they make? Memory chips, yeah. you know, memory. <laughs> In fact, uh, I have a, I have a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a TV, you know, yeah. Polaroid. Polaroid. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, these companies when they change emphasis, think about what rebranding really right. is. Me, most people think rebranding is changing your logo. That's not what rebranding is at all. Rebranding is like a rebirth of your company. Right. You change the emphasis. Yeah. You change, yes, the logo yeah. and the word Cor marks. Corporate and all philosophy, stuff. everything. But you know. in many cases, you're changing your target market. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, Vibram is a good example. Vibram mm -hmm. makes, they were the first company to make rubber soles for right. shoes. Right. Most people don't know that. Okay? Mm -hmm. They've been around forever because they were the first company to do this. So they make rubber soles for hiking boots. Mm -hmm. and all. As a matter of fact, that was the first thing that they did mm -hmm. was rubber soles for hiking right. boots. But they make rubber soles for all kinds of things. Right. And they wanted to interest a younger market. Okay. Well, yeah, younger market, Boy Scouts and everything mm -hmm. use hiking boots, but they wanted to get a whole new market because they figured, you know, this is a really old company. It started in 1925 right. or something. We need to get some younger customers because all our older customers are dying. Right. So they came out with these sh shoes that are like gloves, you know, for toe shoes, right. I call them. Right. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen people yeah, wearing yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. All right. And people my age looked at that and they said, what the heck is that? <laughs> and they feel weird and they're ugly. Yeah. And I'm not wearing that. But guess what? <laughs> I happen to be a Boy Scout leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Boy Scouts love those things. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, what, what, because what? It's, they were designed for a younger market. Well, that's the whole point because you know, you know what the younger people want? 
They want hideous stuff that can just get the parents really upset. <laughs> but I, I would tell you our what. Our generation did it by letting our hair grow down to right, here, you right. know. They were weird looking shoes, but they liked yeah, the it. Earth shoes, remember the Earth shoes? The Earth shoes, was I it, remember. Were they, were the, the toe was higher than the heel, those were really right. weird. But they were comfortable. Yeah. I, remember, I remember they were comfortable. Yeah. As a matter of fact, anyway, you, can still, you can still buy Earth shoes. So. Anyway, uh, market has changed focus. Uh, you change region or culture. Mm -hmm. So if you go to another country, you might have to rebrand mm -hmm. a little bit because you're right. now in that country. Uh, if your product is not well differentiated from all the competitors, right. that's a good time to make a change. Mm -hmm. And if your product is infringing on somebody, right. it's time to make a rebrand. Yeah. Uh, so we talked about Coca-Cola being the good, and we talked about you know, the bad being uh, Windows. BP, they had to spend ungodly amounts of money and re totally rebrand. They had to fire everybody. I mean, they mm -hmm. had to do all kinds of stuff. And seven years later, they're still not fully recovered. No. That's going to be a long, long yeah, It's going to be a long, there. long right. run because, again, people's minds, I mean, when you hurt somebody's livelihood, that's oh, yeah. going to well, be... I mean, the whole, the whole Gulf Coast got, yeah. right. got whacked. I mean, so, they, they, they did more damage than Katrina did. Right. Now, the, long term. Quint the quintessential ugly right. of all these is right. J.C. Penney. Right. So if, for those of you who don't know, J.C. Penney's been around since the 1800s. Mm -hmm. It became J.C. Penney in, like, 1905 mm -hmm. or something like that. Uh, in 2012, the new CEO said, hey, we're going to make it JCP because we want to go after young people. But they never re changed their marketing strategy right. or anything like that. And within a year, the whole thing flopped. Mm -hmm. So they changed it back to sort of like what the old one was, and then that didn't work. And they, they changed it like three or four more times. Yeah, yeah. And the problem was they weren't doing any rebranding. They were just shuffling lo yoga, right. logos. I mean, that's crazy. Right. And that's a big mistake that a lot of companies make. Our company went through a similar thing. Mm -hmm. We started out as W Square Media Group. Mm -hmm. We're actually still W Square right. Media Group. But our radio show took off, and we changed our market emphasis because mm -hmm. originally we were just trying to get TV show companies. Right. And now we do a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we're W Square. I mean, we're working the web to win because right. that's... You know, www. Yeah, people right. emphasize... Well, people recognize us from the radio right. show. So I know we only got a few minutes left. I want to make sure we get to the Worldwide Weirds. Um, I know we are just got past Halloween. Yeah, so we're getting kind of close to Christmas, so I thought yeah. we'd kind of jumpstart things before the you know Thanksgiving holiday. Now, here's one that you probably haven't had on your list. This is man hacks into Alexa into singing fish robot terror ensues. Okay, have you ever <laughs> you ever see those, those uh, what are they called, those uh, uh, big mouth billy bass things yeah. that you put up on top of right. your... It was I like a have fish, and, and when somebody goes underneath, he starts singing. Right. Well, this dude hacked into it so that he could make it Alexa so it could do some really crazy things and really get some people so upset. is it tied to the Alexa yeah so you know you know how that works you know yeah. you can tell it to say things and it'll it'll just say things right. for you and everything so people come in and it can do some really crazy things so when some somebody walks by and you can be in the other room with the, with right. the remote in hand and say hey tell the guy to take a hike right exactly you know and, and it, it tends to rub people the wrong way but I guess that's the whole objective I think that's of the thing, idea you yeah know? <laughs> so here's the second one now I, I guess you know being in Siberia, you expect there to be a lot of snow. But here's what's really weird. Thousands of giant snowballs suddenly appeared on Siberia's in Siberian beaches. I mean, literally. It was like a whole field of these things. When they have the big picture of these things, it's like acres and acres. And some of these things are the size of snowballs. Some of them are the size of bowling balls. Wow. They just showed up. They have no idea how these things were created. Alexa makes snowballs. Exactly. It must be something. Maybe it had to do with the guy with the, the, the billy of uh, the, uh, the big mouth bass, right? And my last one was kind of cool because you know, you know who lives at the North Pole, right? Santa Claus. Santa Claus, right? right. So, what's the last thing you expect to see at the North Pole? How know. about Nazis? <laughs> Turns out there was a secret German base second. during the Second World War that they have not only discovered but kind of rediscovered because it was warm enough up there that the ice is completely. Well, melted. I know they had a secret base in the South Antarctic. Pole. Antarctic, yeah, no, yeah. but this was in the Arctic. Right. It was a weather station, and apparently these guys didn't have a great time at it because I guess... So they found at, them frozen. Well, no, but what happened was that their, their weather supply vessels got trapped in the ice, so those guys were down to eating polar bear at the end. And they finally got them out of there in 1944. Wow. So, look out, Santa. There's Nazis up there. <laughs> um, Watch out for the we're, stormtroopers. We're troopers. at the end of the show here. I want to make sure that I tell... The listeners to go to the note page on the notes page you'll find links to a whole bunch of stuff yeah. there's also a bunch of links in the article itself yeah. that are worth bumping around in uh club wq members go to your dropbox you mm -hmm. got all the goodies there uh next week's show we're going to talk about being a successful entrepreneur yeah. being a successful entrepreneur and uh the week after that i think we're going to talk about the magic of the calendar okay so um until next time guys 
keep working the web doing gang see you next week you bet and watch out for santa stormtroopers <laughs> thank you for using blog talk radio goodbye